we're going to put on one of the reproduction bodies. I masked off the lines, but this has a clear cellophane over it to protect it. So these markers, um, these marks that I put on here with the marker are for me to see the outline. Um, once you take the film off, obviously the marks won't be there anymore. So anyways, the key here is I put blue tape because it's just a straight line coming across here that I'm going to cut, but I'm going to cut all of these curves with the scissors, with a curved scissor, because for me, it's just easier that way to make sure that I don't go off track with the exacto knife. Don't mind doing the straight lines with the exacto knife because I can stay, you know, within the confines of the tape. So I outlined with the marker, you know, where the cut lines are. And so that's what we're going to do next. Um, again, exacto knife when you're cutting these, whether it's a portion or the whole thing, make sure it's a brand new blade. That is so important. So that's what this has is a brand new blade. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Um, along this line and then I'm going to cut this piece these bottom pieces out and that'll leave me clear room for the scissors to come in it'll leave me uh, room for the scissors to come in and start cutting along these lines here so I'm going to cut this um, I'm going to pause this I'm going to cut this on I just find it easier to cut it on my lap that way I get a good hold of it and know what I'm doing so I'll be right back and We'll take it from there. Okay, so as it turns out, I ended up just going ahead and using the X-Acto knife and just going around all the outlines here. I did the straight and then I figured, eh, these aren't so bad. I don't really need to do this just with just the scissors. So anyways, I took the X-Acto knife and I traced all the lines. And now we're gonna cut this body out. So, you can see some of the scoring there. You don't have to go deep with the knife. You just need to score it a little bit and I'll show you what happens. So we'll just make a little cut here. Make another cut here just to get some straight leverage with the lines. Okay, so now that it's scored, you should just be able to bend along the score, along the score, and they should just pop, you know, or just break off. Because this is curved a little bit, we'll just need to cut in a little bit more here. Okay, see how it just comes straight out. So you just do the rest of the body the same way. Where there's curves here, you'll just want to cut with the scissors to make it a little bit easier for it to bend. Yeah. See how clean that comes out all along the score. The key when you're scoring it with the blade is just to try to stay uniform. Don't stop and go is, you know, you kind of, you kind of put the blade on and you don't have to dig in. You just have to put the blade on and just kind of score it, you know, in a smooth fashion. So that way there's no little gaps anywhere along the way. The same thing here. That's why I prefer to do this on my lap and I didn't show you on the video because I put this on my lap and I just moved the knife all along the line in one quick swoop. I stopped here because there's already a line that's going to break there anyways. And then I continued here. So it's just try to keep it smooth. I like to put masking tape in the straight lines because the masking tape makes it nice and straight and it keeps me in line with where I need to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this out. Won't bore you in the video. You saw the process and I'll be right back. Um, before I go further, I wanted to also show how 
these pieces get cut out because it's not really clean to be able to kind of pull this on the score. So what I do is I come in at an angle and just cut and pull little tiny pieces out a little bit at a time. And then I didn't cut the top circle. I just made this a square and then I'll just go in and do the top half a circle with that little line separately. But that's how I come in. I just come in a little bit and just do little tiny pieces at a time. You don't have to do this all in one shot. So you can see just, it'll just be a lot easier this way to to get in there where the score is. There we go. And usually you'll want to cut where the little bends are because that's what keeps the thing from coming down, uh, bending out really easy. So there you go. See, so now you're just left with these little tiny pieces that can, you can cut out with the scissors or if they're big enough, you know, they should just pop right along the score as well. So. So that guy will just get with the scissors here. See? Okay. Nice and clean. And then we'll just get the knife and just score these, this little area here really easy like. And then that's how we'll cut that piece out. Okay, so that was a little bit of a stickler I was doing the front. The nice thing about these reproduction bodies, they're nice and thick. It's not like the old time bodies, they were really thin. I mean, you just put the scissors just the wrong way and all of a sudden, you know, it starts cracking everywhere. So you have a lot of flexibility with these uh, reproduction bodies. So let me finish the rest of it. Just wanted to get that out of the way, show you that piece and uh, be right back. Okay. So now that all is said and done, these are the remnants of the cutouts and this is the body. So what we're gonna do is uh, paint this black. We're gonna mask the front windshield here and the body came with a mask kit. Um, so I'll peel the windshield out and lay it down here because I want a clear windshield so you can see the driver. So test fit the body, make sure that the body fits on the car and all and the front part of this is always a pain in the butt to, to get on because you kind of have to kind of squeeze a little bit, hope it doesn't crack. So there's the front end and then the back just slides onto the shock towers. So I have to cut a hole here, which is nice that it's clear. So we'll mark that to cut a hole here for the body mount. That's right there. Um, the front body mount slides right in. So this, this is set to go. So Move this out a little bit here. So I'm going to cut out the bottom. Won't bore you with that um, because it's pretty simple. The bottom is just straight cuts. So I'm going to cut out the bottom and then the, the wing and I'm going to go ahead and paint this and uh, I'll come back. What I'm going to do is put a coat of black, um, wait for it to dry like 15, 20 minutes, a small mist of black, wait for it to dry 15 minutes and put in another small mist of black. Um, wait another 15 minutes for it to dry and then put a little bit heavier coat. So I'm going to put about four or five coats of black on here, a little bit heavier each time. And that way the paint won't run. 
So, that's what we're going to do next. And um, so, there you go. We'll be right back. Okay, so now the moment of truth. We've got here our black painted body. Um, the masking that came with this aftermarket body was absolutely amazing. Um, it was a vinyl, a thin vinyl, and you can put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off until you get it just right and uh, got it just right. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to order maybe a smoke um, color because the clear is okay, but it's way clear. So I might smoke it just a little bit so you can still see through it, but, um, you know, it'll add some flavor to it rather than just making it clear. So what do we do now that we've got it painted? Um, it looks a little dull, but that's because it still has the protective plastic on it. So remember how we markered it, used the marker to mark all the lines and everything? We'll see you're marking on top of plastic of this kind of cellophane material here. So we can now take this thing off and you can see already it's ultra shiny. Um, also, it's a great protectant because there was a scratch right here. Don't know if you can see that um, with the light. Um, it was a scratch right there, but it was only on the protective film. So it's, uh, that's the other thing. Um, not only protect from overspray, but also protects from light scratches as well. To some, this is kind of satisfying. For me, it's like, I just can't wait to get it off. <laughs> and also, you notice I cut the body first and then painted it. Some people prefer to paint it and then cut the body. I always, I'm always scared of damaging the paint, so that's why I always cut the body first. So, now that we've got this pretty much cleared away here, I'm going to show you some of the decals that I printed. So I have, look at that, that looks just, that looks gorgeous. That black is going to work really nice. And then I'll do the same, peel the film off the bottom. Um, some people actually just leave it on the bottom. That's another little layer of protection to the bottom. Um, maybe that's not such a bad idea. Certainly going to peel it off of the wing. Um, you just have to be careful with the sides because the sides are very thin compared to the rest of it. And this is where it's prone to crack is along the little corners here. So let me show you the decals that I printed. I have a die sub printer. It's an Alps printer. It's an older printer, but the cool thing about it is it doesn't print ink. It prints film and it prints white because basically you have white film. So I can print out a white background and put the colors on that white background, or I can print white lettering. Um, so it's a pretty cool printer. I've had it for a very long time. They're kind of a little bit expensive if you can find one these days. But let me show you the decals that I printed off. Okay, so to wrap this up, almost, I'll wrap it up by putting the decals on and showing the completed uh, body, but I wanted to show you the last steps that I did. Obviously painted the whole body black, want to go with a John, uh, John Player special um, look to it. So I created my, my own decals and I'm just going to give you a real quick rundown. I'll make another video um, of the detail of how I do this, but I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. Um, notice there's some gaps here. What you may not be able to pick up on the camera is 
it says Goodyear in white. So how do I print white? Um, this is vinyl, a thin vinyl um, uh, sticky sticker paper. Um, it's clear, glossy. So what I do is I use equipment that, um, you know, is probably not readily available per se, but at least I can give you um, an opportunity to see how I do it. So in order to get this done, um, I don't use an inkjet and I don't use um, a laser printer. So I use uh, a die sub printer. Um, it's an Alps printer um, and it works basically um, with ribbons and I'll show you how that works. So the first thing I did is I looked up some pictures um, and then copied and pasted and made myself, I use Adobe Acrobat. So I have several layers here. This is the black layer, um, you know, but if I take away the black layer, there's the gold layer. So there's a reason for the madness there. Um, and then there's a color layer. So when I create these decals, I use an Alps um, printer. This is an Alps 1300. The Alps 5000 is more expensive, but basically you do the same thing. So these printers don't use ink, they use ribbon. So it's water resistant. Um, there's also a photo finish ribbon that prints clear, so you can print over it. Um, there's also foil ribbons. I have silver foil, gold foil, magenta foil. I mean, I've got all the different foils, as well as a white. This is CN magenta black and yellow that's in here right now, but I also have a white ribbons um, for it, and that's how I print white. So this has no ink. It uses these ribbons um, and it heats it onto the paper, and basically that's how it creates the colors without ink and this these these ribbons you know are i don't want to say weatherproof <laughs> but you know they can take a lot of abuse um, especially since after i finished printing them i put in a decal coat over the paper um, in this case i used well i'll, I'll get back to the paper um, i actually used um, to me as clear coat on top of it so that'll protect the film even more on the decal sheet. So then what I do um, is I normally will then take what I've printed and I'll use what's called a silhouette cameo to basically cut out the decals so I don't have to use scissors or anything like that. Um, the only problem with the silhouette cameo is that you have to have registration marks so the machine knows where to cut, you know, so you have to print out um, registration marks first and then put your images on top of that. It's just a pain in the ass. So I recently switched over to this guy, which is um, a brother um, scan cut. And so what this does, unlike the silhouette, this will read the paper um, and it'll look at what's on the paper and it'll mask what it sees in the image and then you decide you know what mask it cuts around so basically i don't have to print out what are called registration marks on the paper so the cutter knows where the drawings are i basically can use this thing and just um, basically scan the drawing and it will find all the pieces that aren't white and it'll create a border around it so I can cut around the decal. So that's how I do the decals. So in this case, what I would normally do then is print this out. Then I would normally put a decal clear protective layer um, of um, micro, some kind of microsol type, you know, film on it to protect the, uh, um, the paint or the ribbon. Um, in this case though, what I used was Tamiya um, Clear. Um, and if you do that, I would suggest you do that even with your decals, but do not, you know, put a lot of it on at the same time. This has about four mist coats, mist 
of clear. Just mist spray it because if you spray too much on it, um, it will typically ruin the decal. I'll cut the few decals that I want to put on this out. Um, make sure that when you're putting the decals on your bodies, um, kind of give the body a nice soap and water wash on the plastic, wash your hands. Your hands have to be clean else you're going to get oil on it and your decals or your stickers aren't going to stick very well. But um, give it a nice little um, tiny wash, dry it off completely, make sure it's dry. And then with clean hands, you know, go ahead and put the decals on. Um, the nice thing about these things is um, their this vinyl is rather forgiving. So if you don't place it very well the first time, you can just peel it off a little bit and try again. You got maybe a couple of tries before it starts, you know, um, being real sensitive about sticking. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut these decals off and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. All right. So we're about ready to wrap this up. I uh, cut out a few of the decals that I printed out. I don't like to overburden a model with a whole lot of decals. John Paul, or John Paul, John Player Special um, would inundate their cars with the JPS logo. <laughs> um, I didn't put as many as you probably will find on one of the JPS cars, but um, this is how it turned out. Um, I've already shown you basically how I do the decals, um, and I'll probably devote an entire video um, to how to do that, but again, the key is the printer. Um, you can probably print some decent decals with an inkjet printer. Um, the way they are these days, they're, they're pretty good. Um, but you still can't print white. So that's the only thing. Anyways, so got the body done. I also painted the, uh, the driver. So, you know, and mounted the decals that I already had for the driver. Um, cockpit um, in there so that'll be good to go got the wing as well already laid out so at this point we're ready to put this thing together and um, and call it done so let me let me get to that and we'll come right back all right well, I think we can call this build finished. Um, we made all the necessary repairs. Um, we painted the body, um, made our own decals. And, uh, you know, it didn't come out too bad. I left the, uh, the film on the bottom um, on so that's why it looks a little flat. Um, I didn't take the film off so There you go um, The driver I painted um, Gunmetal I didn't want put in all the decals like the fake carbon decals on the front and all that stuff I just like things a little more simple um, So it's painted gunmetal gray and then the uh, outfit I painted it um, a flat red, um, I think it's X15 if I'm not mistaken, um, over the gunmetal um, lightly because I wanted to give it a, a kind of a wear look. I didn't want it to come out all glossy red. So I painted it flat red instead um, and then just added the little details with the paint markers. Um, the helmet is um, painted um, a chromium red. It's um, some kind of off the shelf paint I found at Walmart. Um, with some metal flaking in it and then about three coats of clear coat so there you go um, i mentioned earlier when you're doing the decals if you do the decals you want to spray a protectant film over it um, i ended up using um I, I warned you guys not to use like krylon enamel paints um rust-oleum enamel paints because it'll eat the paint it'll eat the decals um, but what I used, um, I didn't have the Tamiya, enough Tamiya um, clear um, for it. What I ended up doing is, um, and it worked just fine. You can see the decals um, came out um, just fine. They weren't eaten up or anything. It has 
three or four fine mists of Krylon um, acrylic gloss clear. Um, make sure it's acrylic. Acrylic shouldn't, yeah, I mean, test it first, but it shouldn't damage the decals or eat into them. Still do fine mists, um, but um, the Krylon, um, it has UV protection as well, so you can leave it out in the sun for a little bit. Um, I use um, an Alps printer, so, um, you know, it takes a bit to actually um, wear down the decals because they're film. But anyways, um, the bottom line is I used um, um, Krylon um, Ultraviolet Glossy Acrylic Clear Enamel. Okay, make sure it's acrylic. So, there you go. Um, I think we can haul this guy done. And uh, we're on to the next. I think the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to start looking at attacking a couple of uh, semi trucks. Um, I have a few of those um, waiting in the queue to be built brand new from kits. Um, and I've ordered a crap load of hop ups um, for them. So those will be a pretty cool, interesting build. So this is the last, I think this is a part six. Um, Last of the video, so I'm sorry it took so long to get this last one in. You know, work and life gets in the way. But this is done, it's going on the shelf. Um, and, you know, um, like I said, hopefully you learned something from my mistakes. Hopefully you learned something from the stuff that I do. Um, maybe even learn how not to do something. <laughs> you know, everybody has their style and has their taste. So the bottom line is enjoy enjoy life do what you do um have fun with these things and um just remember you only live once so live it up take care